Hello, everybody. I'm Everton Oliveira from the Groundwater Project. And I have the pleasure to bring to you here Richard Winston. Richard Winston is a hydrologist in the Integrated Modeling and Prediction Division in the United States Geological Survey. He's an author of several computer programs to aid in the de development and understanding of groundwater models. And no less, he's, present, he's produced a great book that I have the pleasure to bring to you here today. Welcome, Richard. Thank you for collaborating with the Groundwater Project and congratulations for your great book. Please tell us a little bit about your career. You have two graduations, biology and geology. Two PhDs, yes. amazing. <laughs> Paleobotany and hydrogeology. I couldn't stand uh, longer than one, sorry. And your book comes in two parts as well. Uh, so what else about your life? Do you have two jobs, two sons, <laughs> what else? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> well, I, I uh, was originally in paleobotany and uh, there's not a whole lot of jobs in paleobotany. I, and I change directions and uh, study hydrogeology instead. Uh, so that's how I ended up with uh, two PhDs. Uh, there's more to the story than that, but that's much as I want to say here. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to thank the Groundwater Project for publishing the book and especially like to thank Eileen Poter for all her editing, which was very helpful. Um, so I, uh, after I graduated from the University of Maryland, I was uh, uh, an academic at Louisiana State University for a few years. I was a terrible academic and they did not renew my contract, um, but I had learned a little bit about groundwater before then, groundwater modeling. Uh, my first groundwater modeling project was, it, it was uh, a failure because I couldn't get the model to run after trying to use it for three months. Finally got uh, one of the graphical user interfaces and was able to, to get it to run uh, and, and complete my work and then realized how silly I had been at most of my original uh, uh, inputs for the model. So like everybody else, you have to have to learn and you make mistakes along the way. So um, while I was at LSU, um, at that time, the only way to get mod flow was to either uh, get the source code from the USGS and compile it yourself, in which case you had to buy a compiler, which might cost Two thousand dollars or something, or you could buy a pre-compiled version for one thousand dollars, and then, if you're like me, you need another program just to help you run it. Uh, so all that was uh, a big hassle. Um, but I, I got a advertisement from IBM for a preview version of their Fortran compiler which is Microsoft Power Station, which is no longer in existence. They, they quit doing a Fortran compiler, but uh, the compiler worked for 30 days. And in that time, while I was waiting for the free version to come, I got all the source code I could get from everywhere and compiled a version of ModFlow and put it on the, an FTP site and let people know about it. So suddenly I'm supposedly an expert in mod flow, which I wasn't. And I started getting lots of questions about how to use mod flow. So I started, I created a, a series of web pages that uh, gave the input formats for that version of mod flow, which would have been uh, mod flow. 96, I guess, at that point. Um, and then I worked for a little while as a consultant for, or contractor for Argus Interwear before starting work at the USGS, where I worked on a 
graphical user interface for Modflow that was a plugin for Argus Engineering's project. And then I eventually uh, started my own uh, standalone interface for Modflow and other programs. Um, so that's that was Model Muse, which I use in, in my book. So that's a little bit about my career. Thank you, thank you, quite, uh, quite interesting. So, uh, Modflow is likely the uh, the best known groundwater model ever, and that's my understanding. Tell us how how it all started. Why the USGS decided to put together the code, right, and why it became so widely used. What and uh, later on, what improvements ha improvements have been made or have been added to it along the years? Please. Okay. Well. Um, Modflow started out as a project in the research group at the U.S. Geological Survey, but that project ran into a lot of problems. First of all, some of the people who had been doing ground, uh, writing the groundwater modeling programs uh, initiated that at the USGS. One left, uh, the George Pinder left for academia. Um, uh, Trescott knew was another one in there. Uh, he had to retire because he had developed brain cancer, which later killed him. And then, um, the third, um, uh, Larson, uh, left for uh, to, to join, um, uh, Papadopoulos and Associates. Okay. And so they, they were some of the people who were. Go, might have been uh, creating this this uh, modular model. Uh, there are some other people too, but George, uh, but Larson was the only one who had actually done any work on it uh, before he left, and the other people weren't doing much of anything. And at that point, uh, Mike McDonald was uh, recruited into the Water Resource Division. That's not the same as the research group. It's a different group. But he was giving um, support to people in field offices on groundwater modeling. And he was also joined the group of people who were supposed to be creating this modular model. Well, he got tired of nothing ever happening with that. And so he, he got permission to take over the whole project and just do it himself. And he recruited Arlen Harbaugh to uh, work with that. He was at the New Jersey office at the time. And together, uh, they created a working version of, of Modflow and start, they started, they started to work on it in about 1980, uh, I think, and had were starting to teach classes in 1982, and then the first version came out in 1984. Then for the next four years, they worked on document a better set of documentation for that, and that came out in 1988. As far as it's it. It was already being used even before it was published, both inside and outside the USGS. People would uh, contact them and ask for the code and they would send it to them. So the initial version of Modflow had all, all you needed for you know 95% of the projects that you might want to do with regard to groundwater flow. So that was nice and you you didn't have uh, prior to modflow the modelers would get uh, a disk of source code and each modeler would modify the source code to deal with their particular problem and so they, there got to be an awful lot of different versions of models, over 500 versions, oh. uh, keeping all those documented was a real hassle, which was part of the reason I imagine <laughs> they wanted to have mod flow. And so then you, you didn't have to 
document the whole thing each time. With Modflow, you could pretty much use it as is. You didn't have, because it, it was pretty comprehensive, even in that early version. So you didn't have to document the code. You could just say you used it. Uh, of course, source code was available for a nominal sum. So if you were at a big university or some or a consulting firm, you could afford to compile it yourself. You could get a pre-compiled version. And the, the cost would not be exorbitant for um, a consulting firm, typically. And the, the documentation was... Uh, excellent and so those were some of the the reasons that it became popular uh, another thing i should mention is that uh, mt3d uh, came out which which used the output from modflow for solute transport and that was an important uh, problem for especially for the consulting companies which would be trying to remediate contaminant transport issues so i think that that answers that question thank you so uh, uh about, about your book what i think is it's it's a good thing is, is that the users will be able to install the model in their computers right so what yes. would be the minimum requirement for uh, to run the models with some comfort and solve the exercises that come to, comes with the book or for real situations well, after well it it the, ex the exercises use ModelMuse, which is a graphical user interface which runs on Windows. So you have to have Windows. But any Windows computer these days is going to be able to run all the exercises in the book without any issue. It, it doesn't really require much compared to what a typical computer these days uh, makes available. Now, if you're doing a model with millions of cells, then you might want to invest in something that's has uh, more memory and more store and more disk space than um, just the run-of-the-mill lap laptop or desktop computer. Very good. Very good. So, uh, ma many models like to compare modeling, like driving a car. My former uh, supervisor, uh, my master's, Bob Cleary, is a modeler, and he used to, to, to use that comparison. So he says, you, you don't need to understand mechanics to become a good driver. Right? Your, your book does prepare like the reader to become good drivers, and some might become even good pilots, right? So how much do a reader need to know about mechanics in the case of your book? Well, and I certainly would encourage people to understand mechanics, to, to understand the, the things behind it. But my book does not focus on that. It's more of making you a good driver than making you a good pilot or mechanic. So I would say you, you should know Darcy's Law. You should know what specific storage, specific yield, hydraulic conductivity, um, those sorts of what the properties are and what they represent. Um, I think that with that, you can probably get started using ModFlow without having to go into understanding uh, the equations that it's actually solving or, and how it does that. That's very good. That's very good. I think I, I agree from 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 your book. So your book has many uh, nice screenshots to guide to guide the reader through simulations, which is very good. How did you organize this book for today's users, as compared to twenty years ago when you when you were working already, for example? So what are the differences in the the background that drove the design of the today's book structure? That's a hard one for me to answer. Um, I don't really remember how I would have <laughs> organized it 20 years ago, but um, <laughs> <That's the point. laughs> you know, if I if I were to write a book like this 20 years ago, the it would probably have been printed on paper, which would have made it very expensive. 
exactly. Uh, yes. So I probably would have had not had nearly as many screenshots as, as I put in this book. It is quite it's, it is quite uh, thorough in the way you 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 use. I I, I went through the book. Uh, it's very very good work. Very good work. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So when when we use models uh, for for from your own experience, from someone who's thinking about uh, going through your book, when we use models, we greatly improve our understanding of the technical feeling of flow and transport in real situations. And that for me arises uh, uh, clearly from your book. How do you see this and what could the reader expect from the experience of working through the exercise of your uh, purposes, of your book? Well, I, I would think that they would gain an understanding of what ModFlow is doing, that ModFlow is basically uh, solving a water balance equation, that the amount of water that goes in must equal the amount of water that goes out, uh, or if they're not, if for transient simulation, the change of storage has to be taken into account, and it does that for each cell in the model. Um, I would expect that that they would understand that a bit better. They would understand what some of the common pitfalls are in in modeling. Um, sort of the type of mistakes that I made when I was first starting out, try to help people not make those mistakes. I would, I would hope they would understand you know, how to solve some of the typical problems that they might encounter. Uh, for instance, model might fail to converge. They could understand what, what it means when a model doesn't converge. They could understand why they might need to look at the water overall water budget to get some idea whether the model is uh, unacceptable or maybe acceptable, and how to judge whether the model is acceptable or not. Yeah, that's true. It's very good. So what audience do you have in mind for your book, like on a broader view? I, I would say it's for people who want to learn how to, to use ModFlow. They have some reason for wanting to learn it. Either they're in a class where it's being used or they're maybe a graduate student who's, who needs to do some groundwater modeling for their uh, research. Um, the the book is aimed at people who are just getting started and that's why the i chose the title that i did exactly it's getting started yeah yeah and i i, I really appreciate you. you've done a great job uh most of the books that i'm reading from the groundwater projects i have the the same feeling that uh, how i missed those books when i was a student a long time ago right because of, uh, that would make our lives a lot easier to 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 work through mod flow, for example, such an important tool for hydrogeologists. So thank you very much for for a job well done. Make your final considerations, please. Uh, well, I can just talk a little bit about another project I'm working on, which is uh, what originally was going to be a chapter in this book, but. Um, it would have made the book too long, which was a, a short history of, of mod flow. And so I've been interviewing a lot of the, the people who had, uh, originally worked on mod flow or related issue, related things. So maybe that will come out at some point, but I'm not quite ready to release it at this point. Thank you very much. That was a, a great work. We had here Richard Winston. Congratulations for your, your great book. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a great tool for hydrogeologists all over the world. I'm sure lots of people would like to translate it to using their modern tongues. Great. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Thanks.